Hi, everybody, and welcome back for another chapter of Sri Nisargadatta Maharaja's I Am That. And today we will be looking at chapter 78, All Knowledge is Ignorance. All knowledge is ultimately ignorance of your true self. Are we permitted to request you to tell us the manner of your realization? Somehow it was very simple and easy in my case. My guru, before he died, told me, believe me, you are the supreme reality. Don't doubt my words. Don't disbelieve me. I am telling you the truth. Act on it. You are the absolute supreme reality. You are the Parabrahman. I could not forget his words. And by not forgetting, I have realized. But what were you actually doing? Nothing special. Nothing special. I lived my life. I plied my trade. I looked after my family and every free moment I would spend just remembering my guru and his words. Just remembering my guru and his words. You are the absolute supreme reality. You are not what you take yourself to be. He died soon after, and I had only the memory to fall back on, but it was enough. It must have been the grace and power of your guru. His words were true, and so they came true. True words always come true. My guru did nothing. His words acted because they were true. Whatever I did came from within, unasked and unexpected. The guru started a process without taking any part in it. Put it as you like. Things happen as they happen. Who can tell why and how? I did nothing deliberately. All came by itself. The desire to let go, to be alone, to go within. All came by themselves. To let go, to be alone in silence and solitude, to go within and to ponder the words of the guru. You are not the body. You are not the mind. You are nothing perceivable or conceivable, but that which makes all perception possible. You are the absolute supreme reality. You are the Parabrahman. You made no efforts whatsoever? None. Believe it or not, I was not even anxious to realize. He only told me that I am the Supreme and then died. I just could not disbelieve him. The rest happened by itself. I found myself changing. That is all. I found myself changing. Look, I'm changing. My consciousness is changing all by itself. As a matter of fact, I was astonished. Wow. But a desire arose in me to verify his words. And this is what we must all do to verify Nisargadatta's words. It's not enough to believe the words. It's a good start. 
helpful, I suppose, in terms of clarity, but we must do the work, we must do the investigation, or even as Nisargadatta has just said, the remembering, the deep contemplation of the truth. Not just once, but to meditate upon these words, to be, uh, to marinate with the truth. I was so sure that he could not possibly have told a lie that I felt I shall either realize the full meaning of his words or die. I was feeling quite determined, but did not know what to do. I would spend hours thinking of him and his assurance, not arguing, but just remembering what he told me. Think about it. I would spend hours, hours thinking, I am the absolute supreme. I am. I am not this conceptual person. I'm not a separate self. I am the absolute. What happened to you then? How did you know that you are the supreme? Nobody came to tell me, nor was I told so inwardly. In fact, it was only in the beginning when I was making efforts that I was passing through some strange experiences, seeing lights, hearing voices, meeting gods and goddesses and conversing with them. Once the guru told me, you are the supreme reality. I ceased having visions and trances and became very quiet and simple. I found myself desiring and knowing less and less until I could say in utter astonishment, I know nothing, I want nothing. I know nothing, I want nothing. I know nothing, I want nothing. Were you genuinely free of desire and knowledge or did you impersonate a yani according to the image given to you by your guru? I was not given any image, nor did I have one. My guru never told me what to expect. More things may happen to you. Are you at the end of your journey? There was never any journey. I am as I always was. There was never any journey. I am as I always was. How can you, how can there be a journey to beingness? You already are. I am. I am. What is the distance between here and here? <laughs> to here and everywhere. This awareness, is it apart from you? Could you separate yourself from awareness? And if you could, what would this be that is aware of this so-called separate awareness? I am. It's the only thing we know. I am. I exist. I am conscious. I am aware. What was the supreme reality you were supposed to reach? I was undeceived, that is all. I used to create a world and populate it. Now, I don't do it anymore. Where do you live then? In the void, beyond being and non-being, 
beyond consciousness. This void is also fullness. Do not pity me. It is like a man saying, I have done my work. There is nothing left to do. This void is also fullness. Do not pity me. I am beyond being and non-being, beyond consciousness and even beyond awareness, I have heard him say. This void is also fullness. It's empty and yet it's completely full to the brim. I have done my work. There is nothing left to do. You are giving a certain date to your realization. It means something did happen to you at that date. What happened? The mind ceased producing events. It stopped producing events. It stopped. The ancient and ceaseless search stopped. I wanted nothing, expected nothing, accepted nothing as my own. There was no me left to strive for. The me, gone. Even the bare I am faded away. The other thing that I noticed was that I lost all my habitual certainties. Earlier, I was sure of so many things. Now, I am sure of nothing. But I feel that I have lost nothing by not knowing, because all my knowledge was false. My not knowing was in itself knowledge of the fact that all knowledge is ignorance. That I do not know is the only true statement the mind can make. I do not know. I do not know. Take the idea, I was born. You may take it to be true. It is not. You were never born, nor will you ever die. You were never born, nor will you ever die. It is the idea that was born and shall die, not you. By identifying yourself with it, you became mortal. Just like in a cinema, all is light so does consciousness become the vast world. Look closely, and you will see that all names and forms are but transitory waves on the ocean of consciousness, that only consciousness can be said to be, not its transformations. In the immensity of consciousness, a light appears, a tiny point that moves rapidly and traces shapes, thoughts, and feelings, concepts, and ideas like the pen writing on paper. And the ink that leaves a trace is memory. You are that tiny point, and by your movement, the world is recreated. Stop moving, and there will be no world. Stop moving, and there will be no world. Look within, and you will find that the point of light is the reflection of the immensity of light in the body as the sense I am. There is only light. All else appears. There is only light. All else appears. Do you know that light? Have you seen it? To the mind, it appears as darkness. 
It can be known only through its reflections. All is seen in daylight except daylight. Have I to understand that our minds are similar? How can it be? You have your own private mind, woven with memories, held together by desires and fears. I have no mind of my own. What I need to know, the universe brings before me as it supplies the food I eat. Do you know all that you want to know? There is nothing I want to know. But what I need to know, I come to know. Does this knowledge come to you from within or from outside? It does not apply. My inner is outside and my outer is inside. I may get from you the knowledge needed at the moment, but you are not apart from me. You are not outside of me. Everything happens inside the self of oneness. What is Turiya, the fourth state we hear about? To be the point of light tracing the world is Turiya. To be the light itself is Turiyatita. But of what use are names when reality is so near? Is there any progress in your condition? When you compare yourself yesterday with yourself today, do you find yourself changing, making progress? Does your vision of reality grow in width and depth? Reality is immovable and yet in constant movement. Reality is immovable and yet in constant movement. It is like a mighty river. It flows and yet it is there eternally. What flows is not the river with its bed and banks, but its water. So does the sattva guna, the universal harmony, play its games against tamas and rajas the forces of darkness and despair. In sattva, there is always change and progress. In rajas, there is change and regress. While tama stands for chaos, the three gunas play eternally against each other. It is a fact, and there can be no quarrel with a fact. Must I always go dull with tamas and desperate with rajas? What about sattva? Sattva is the radiance of your real nature. You can always find it beyond the mind and its many worlds. But if you want a world, you must accept the three gunas as inseparable, matter, energy, life, one in essence distinct in appearance. They mix and flow in consciousness. In time and space, there is eternal flow, birth and death again, advance, retreat, another advance, another again retreat, apparently without a beginning and without end. Reality being timeless, Changeless, bodiless, mindless awareness is bliss. Mindless awareness is bliss. Where consciousness does not reach, matter begins. A thing is a form of being which we have not understood. It does not change. It is always the same. It appears to be there on its own, something strange and alien. Of course, it is the chit consciousness, but appears to be outside because of its apparent changelessness. The foundation of things is in memory. Without memory, there would be no recognition, creation, reflection, rejection, 
Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. This is the eternal process. All things are governed by it. Birth, life, death. Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. Is there no escape? I am doing nothing else but showing the escape. Understand that the one includes the three and that you are the one and you shall be free of the world process. I am doing nothing else but showing the escape. Understand that the one includes the three and that you are the one and you shall be free of the world process. Thank you, Nisagarata Maharaj. Om. I did nothing else but remember my guru and his words. You are the absolute supreme reality. You are not what you take yourself to be. You are nothing perceivable or conceivable but that which makes all perception possible. You are not the body. You are not the mind. You are nothing physical or mental. You are not a concept. You are not a thought, a feeling, or a sensation. You are beyond time and space. Beyond, beyond, beyond. Gate, gate, paragate, parasangate, bodhisattva, swaha, sorry. Gate, gate, paragate, parasangate, bodhisattva, bodhisattva. Gate, gate, paragate, parasangate, bodhisattva. Oh, Shanti, 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 peace, 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 Namaste.